What's going on everyone? In this video, I'll be talking about SAT math March tips. The SAT March exam is roughly 12 days away. For some people, it's like 20 days away. But the fact that a lot of students have probably not started studying is probably very true, right? So probably a universal fact right now. A lot of students, this is where they're starting to pick up those books, starting to look at Khan Academy, starting to watch my videos, watch my ST math course if you've already bought it. And they're like, wow, okay, now it's time to study. Now it's panic mode. But here I am trying to save you all, so make sure you guys get an 800 on the ST math March section. So the first tip is to hone in on linear equations, okay? So the ST math exam has a bunch of topics. You got quadratics, linear equations, measure numbers, uh, um, ratios, circles, triangles, so many things that studying for all these topics and making sure you study for every single topic can be very hard. A lot of students end up missing a topic to study for. And when they see on SAT, they're like, whoa, 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 I never even studied for this. And that's personally why I created SAT math course for like 200 bucks with a 25% discount for all those who use the code first 100 because it covers every single topic in depth, all the tips, all the tricks, everything you need to know to get an 800 on the ST math exam. Be sure to get the course if you have not already before it sells out and it's back to 200 bucks. And now why do I say focus on linear equations the most? Right, let's say let's say you have like two days left for the SAT math March section, right? And you're like, shoot, I haven't started really studying. Well, in that case, you want to do linear equations. And the reason you want to focus on linear equations, since hard of algebra is like 40% of the entire ST math exam, honing in on linear equations will allow you to basically secure like a perfect score on 40% of the math SAT, which will probably equate to at least a 600. And that's not that bad. And if you are able to even do average on the other topics like quadratics, maybe get a perfect on some other topics, you can still crack that 700 range. So that's why if it's like two days left, three days left for the math SAT, or you only have time to really study one topic on the math SAT, make it linear equations, word problems, inequalities, because these will make up for most of the points you can grab on the math SAT. Okay, so please be sure to do that and you will see that, wow, this tip really helps you all. So be sure to follow that. Now, while I do say, you know, hone in on linear equations, right? Right now it's what, like March 1st, there's 11 days left for most people. I still want you all to not skip those small topics, right? Don't skip imaginary numbers. Don't skip ratios. Don't skip um, other uh, factoring problems, right? Like rearranging the equation because yes, they're probably making only up like 5% or maybe 7% of the entire math SAT, but they're still making up a percentage, right? They still count for at least 10, 20 points, maybe even 40 points on the math SAT. So you wanna grab every single point you can because what if you do study linear equations as much as you can, but you still end up getting like two of those questions wrong. But because you also focus on the small topics, you end up mashing like a smaller topic and you get all those questions correct on the math SAT. This will result in your score probably still being very high and pretty solid score that you will be happy with, unless you want a perfect score. In that case, you gotta watch my course and you gotta make sure you start studying really hard. But please do not skip minor topics, guys. Like I said, every point matters. You never know when that topic might pop up on your SAT. Like I remember box and whisker plots was a very small topic when I took the SAT. And I was like, yo, I'm not really gonna study this. Like, what, what are the chances that I would get this on my math SAT? And guess what happened? I got it. But luckily the day before I did study box and whisker plots, you know, the uh, Q1, Q3, medium, min, max, how outliers, how it all works. And then when I saw the question SAT, I was like, wow, really good thing I studied this topic that I had like no idea what it would be on, right? I, I thought it was like, there's no chance it would be on. And in the entire SAT, there's only one question on Boston Western Plus, just one. And that SAT, I got that one question, right? But luckily, because I studied for it, I was able to get it right. I was able to get that 800 on the SAT. The SAT math section to be exact. If you got 800 on the total SAT, you got some studying to do, buddy. My third tip, is to try to finish the SAT math non-calculator section within seven minutes. Now you guys will probably think I am a menace for saying seven minutes. Well, if you guys have seen my viral videos, you see that I finished the SAT in like five or six minutes from the non-calc section at least. And if they blew up, right? A lot of people are like, whoa, 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 how is he able to do this? Now, did you see the answers first? That's not what happened, guys. See, what happens is when you practice as much as I did for the SAT, you can see that all the patterns and like tendencies of SAT math problems so when you read an ST math problem, if you're able to understand, okay, this is a linear equation, uh, a system of linear equations, I know how to scale them, add them together, and to find a solution. Once you understand the pattern for each type of problem, the moment you see the problem, you know the pattern, and then boom, you can solve the problem like almost instantly. And all the like the trouble is gone, and it's super easy for you. And you're happy, you're like, oh shoot, like, wow, I finished this problem in like two seconds, then I move on to the next problem. Oh, it's only, oh, it only took me five seconds. 
The next one only took me 20 seconds. The next one only took me 10 seconds. Like by doing these problems really fast, you're not only seeing that, hey, you can do the problems fast, so time shouldn't be an issue, which will boost your confidence and decrease your nerves, but you're also checking your accuracy. Like, are you able to finish these problems fast, efficiently, while getting 100% on every single problem? And this is a really good skill to have, and the only way you can really test yourself and put yourself up against the wall is by trying to finish the ST and all calculator section within seven minutes. Now, just because, let's say you do ST practice test seven and you get like a, a 760 on, right? So you, you take the calculator section and you speed through the non-calc section. You can still take ST practice test seven like maybe a week later. Yes, you probably might remember some of the problems for the ST non-calc section, but as long as you remember exactly how to get the answer, like the procedure to do it, it's fine. I don't want you thinking just because you did ST practice test seven once, you can't do it again because, oh, I already did it once. That's such a myth. When I took the SAT, I did like ST practice too, like four times, okay? Just to boost my own confidence. Like at, at the fourth time, I probably knew all the answers by heart, but I will still do the work, still show the steps needed to get to the answer. That way it's not like I'm just remembering the answer. I don't know how to do it, but I actually knew how to do every single question. And I took the test before, like the day before or two days before my SAT and it's boosted my confidence. And I was able to get that like that 15 uh, 40 on the SAT. And that goes into our fourth tip and that is to redo practice tests you've done. Like I said, guys, I did that all the time. It helped me boost confidence, decrease the nerves. And it's, it's a good way to see improvement as well. If you're getting like a, a 1360, the first time you take SAT practice to test two, and then two weeks later, after you've been, you know, intensely studying, watching my course, uh, using my ST math notes, I come free with the course, and I'll uh, watch my ST reading videos, you're like, oh shoot, like now I'm at a 1520 on the same test, on the same ST practice test too. And that just shows improvement. So that's why I just take the same test again, guys. It's not, there's no harm in that. I really do hope you guys are able to like, get past that mental hurdle of taking the same thing over again. There's not, nothing wrong with that. So if you guys enjoyed all these tips, be sure to like the video, drop a subscribe, drop a like, uh, drop a comment. Comment down below when your SAT is, if you're taking the March SAT or the April SAT. And if you haven't already, be sure to check out my SAT math course. The first 100 people to buy will get a special 25% discount using code FIRST100. So be sure to do that before it's too late and you have to end up paying 200 bucks, which again, is still very little compared to SAT math tutoring. But thank you all for watching. Peace.